Welcome back guys, or yeah man. Uh, hope you're all feeling well or feeling airy. Uh, <laughs> come on, come on, you must know what this is. Uh, basically, we are, we are looking at a new beer now that was released yesterday on the Heineken Blade. Uh, it's a brand new release, it's turned up today. It's in the machine now. There's a clue where it's from. It's from Jamaica. It's probably Jamaica's best-selling beer, I'm guessing. And what we are looking at, there we go. We are taking a look at, let me move around now. Uh, we are taking a look at Red Stripe from the Heineken Blade. Uh, it's an eight litre keg. Uh, it's, it's a Jamaican beer. It's coming in at 4.7%, which is the standard ABV for it. So that's good. Uh, I don't think anything's changed. I'm certain it's 4.7% in Jamaica as well. Uh, this come in at £35.99 for 8 litres. I actually was quite surprised. I expected another two, three quid to be on top of that uh, for this keg. Uh, it's down to temperature. The keg is full. I haven't poured anything. I'm trying to get in the mood by wearing the old Jamaica top. Uh, we've got the red stripe glass at the ready, kind of. Uh, <laughs> So any minute now, we'll go over there, we'll do a video with a pour, and uh, we'll see what we get. And as it happens, I'm off to Jamaica, actually, in uh, September for my 10th wedding anniversary. So there's a good chance I'll be drinking a few of these. So uh, let's get cracking. So let's give her a go. Look at that. What a beautiful red stripe glass that is. That's the best money you can buy. First pour, like I say, I'm expecting this to be extremely lively. So let's give her a go. There we go, extremely, extremely lively. It'll settle down. So, we're back. Pour has been done in uh, the exclusive red stripe glass. <laughs> there we go. To be fair, it is a glass I actually got from Beerwolf uh, a long time ago. So we can kind of say it's a Heineken branded glass just without the red stripe or in this case with the red stripe. So beer in a glass, there we go. It's a 330 ml glass, yeah, it's a big head. This was the very first pour out of it. Uh, it has settled down a bit. I don't think that's too bad for a small glass uh, with a first pour. Very light in color. Like I say, actually, before we get on, from Beerwolf, £35.99. Some people are happy with it, some people aren't. Uh, I believe there are people that aren't keen on it. I believe there are people that have tried it already that have knocked it, if you like. Uh, but I've got to admit, when I reviewed the can that I got from B&M, I did, I did like it. Uh, you can't, ex don't expect it to be any world beater. It's not going to be that. But the chances are, or hopefully, it's going to be an enjoyable drop. So let's crack on. Like I say, £35.99. It's very light in colour. Very light, sort of straw-looking colour, gentle bubbles going up the glass. This is nucleated. It's got like a few little rings on the very bottom of the glass. It's a very decent glass for lager. First pour, like I say, has settled down a little bit. Still a three-finger white compact head, but it looks decent. So let's dive in. Try and give it a swirl and try and get some aromas off it. From what I recall, I thought it, it, it when I had the can, it was quite sort of bready, but... Yeah, it's that first pour. Now, apparently, so I heard a while ago, that it's, it's got a, a, a spicy sort of kick to it on the nose. From what I heard a long time ago from apparently a bar expert who actually works for Heineken, uh, they recommend letting the beer overflow a bit and then skimming it. And that's because the most bitterest part of the head is that first bit and the top bit. How true it is, I don't know, but it has that. Bit of a sort of spicy, bitter sort of nose on it. There is a little bit more breadiness coming there on the nose. Malty, little bit of lemon citrus. In all fairness, I mean, it don't smell awful, but it does smell very much standard kind of sort of lager. So let's stop talking. In fact, I'm going to treat myself. 
I'm going to top it up a little bit. It's probably going to end up with an even bigger head. Yeah, it has. It's just end up. Look at that. Bit of flake in that. Was it worth topping up? Probably not. So let's dive in. First try, red stripe on the blade. 4.7% Jamaican lager. Cheers. I'm wondering whether this beer will change with a couple of glasses. No, oh, it's developing a little bit. Developing a little bit after that first mouthful. Right, first mouthful. As can happen with a lot of beers. Until your palate adjusts and you coat the mouth, coat, your, coat the inside of your mouth with a beer. You, you either kind of get hit with full of flavour and then after that it sort of towels off or it feels a little bit plain to start off with and then starts developing the more you, the more the inside of your mouth gets uh, coated with the beer. Body isn't too bad on it. It's not bad for a lager body, especially at 4.7%. Certainly not wishy-washy or thin. Has a bready, malty feel about it in the body. Gentle carbonation. Uh, certainly for a lager. A lot of lagers can be a little bit over gassy. This one, I think, has plenty of bubbles in there, but it, it, it don't really, I'm not gonna say it fills you up with, with gas. It's quite smooth and it's quite soft in the mouth. Uh, I'm gonna to top it up again, so I'm just gonna pause it. As you can see, 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 see. Uh, still a little bit lively to start off with, uh, but tasting notes. Slight, sweet, maltiness to it. You get that little bre uh, bready feel in there, which is quite nice. A little bit of a hoppy bite. There is a tickle of a, that little hoppy spiciness in there. A nice lemon sort of citrus note. It's very clean, it's very crisp. It's nice and refreshing. The 4.7%, obviously you don't sort of get that. It just tastes like, you know, for me it just tastes like a lot of other lagers in that sense of alcohol. But I think if you were drinking, if you had this and then drunk something that was 3.6% or something or 4%, I think you would notice the difference. I think it's a case that you notice it more if you have less of an ABV rather than noticing if the ABV is that little bit higher. I quite like the hoppiness that you get on it. That little hoppy sort of bite to it. It's not overpowering, but you do just get that feel of it. Uh, I think it's quite decent. Uh, I've heard that a couple of people think it's not that good or quite bland, but in, if, if, let's be honest, Red Stripe is a big name beer. It's a big brand beer. It's in the supermarkets. It's, it's, you know, it, it, it is a big name to a certain extent, you know, that, you know, it's very commercial. It's a commercial beer, if you like. And yeah, it's no world beater in, in, in beers, but it's pretty good for one of them sort of commercial kind of beers, if you like. Yeah, it's not gonna compare with anything German. It's not brewed to be in German. It's, it's, it's a, 
It's brewed in ja uh, Jamaica. It's going to be a different beer. It's going to be a downable one. It's going to be light, crisp and refreshing. I wouldn't even say it's that light, to be honest, but it is crisp and refreshing. And it does go down a tree. It's not going to be too heavy or complex on flavours. For a start, it's a lager. So it's, it's never going to have your head going round in fucking circles, is it? Because it's a lager. But what it's got, it's got all the lager traits in there. You get a little bit of hoppiness, you get a little bit of spiciness. It's clean, crisp, refreshing, it's malty. Uh, yeah, is it as good as the can? Well, I don't know, I'm gonna to have to pick up a can, I think, uh, and compare the two, but I'll be honest with you. I think it's quite decent. It's, an, it's a nice, easy, kind of, don't think about it, drink it kind of beer. Now. Some beers can be really shit. Uh, and when you drink them, you know you're not enjoying it. You know it's going to be a struggle to, to get for you, through a few pints. I don't think this is one of them. I think this is the sort of beer that's going to go down easy. It's going to be enjoyed. I think a lot of people might say it's boring because... It maybe doesn't make them think about this, that and the other. But the flavours are there. And what it does, it, 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 like I say, you can just sit down, drink it, enjoy it. So for me, Red Stripe on the Heineken Blade gets a thumbs up. I'd happily drink that again. That's a nice, easy going, fucking turn off from the world, drink the beer and it go down the tree. So yeah, like I say, Red Stripe for me, decent beer. I like it. Would I buy it again? I would actually. I wish I'd bought two kegs of it now, but there's always that worry. You know, I've done all this before on the Perfect Draft. I've got another bloody keg of Copperberg to get through. Uh, but yeah, I'd recommend giving it a go. Just remember, it's one of them supermarket, big name brand beers. Ain't going to set your world alight. It's not going to offer you anything that German beer does. But what it will do is be drinkable, enjoyable, and nothing nasty in there. So there you go, there's my thoughts on this beer. If you've had the beer before, in can, keg, whatever, feel free to comment. Thank you all for watching, hope you've enjoyed it. What I will do is pick up some cans as well, and uh, I'll do a comparison between the keg and the can. Thanks for watching, see you on another one. Cheers.